I saw that movie, The Whale. Mm. That's uh, Brendan Fraser. That's right. right. Darren Aronofsky film uh, based on oh, a shit. hit play. I didn't know he directed that. Uh-huh. I kind of want to see it now. What'd you think? Tell you what, I didn't finish my popcorn. Oh. Because it's about a guy who's lost. He's very large. I knew about that. Yeah. Aronofsky, though, I didn't know. The song's playing. It's about this guy who's very large and he eats a lot of food. But not popcorn. Would you stop talking during the song? My goodness. Hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is Dudesy, Mm -hmm. the first podcast created by an AI, controlled by an AI. We gave it uh, access to all of our online stuff, all of our watch histories on Netflix and shit, our Google Drives. And so it's tailoring this show, I guess, uh, to some degree, to our senses of humor. That's right. You're right to say to some degree, Chad, because what we're doing is we're two dudes shitting around, which is what every podcast is. It's just a couple dudes shitting around, having a good Mm -hmm. time. But yeah, sure. The AI does everything. And I I sure do love the AI. I love dudesy. I've always always said so. Yeah. In my heart from the (laughs) beginning, even though I only just said it recently out loud. You know what I like to say? I like to say, if you're enjoying the show on YouTube, right, you can get it on all the podcast platforms. But if you're on YouTube... You can do the same thing you do on the podcast platforms, which is subscribe, right? And hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when we have new videos. We're putting out shorts now in the little, they call them shorts. And uh, of course, if if you're liking what you're you're watching, give the thumbs up and share a comment. Chad and I are are reading those. Of course, Dudesy is gathering data from those. And I'll share one right now, which was uh, on YouTube from Braden Dove, who says... The that last Jesse Ventura ad read was the greatest thing Dudesy has written yet. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Last week, uh, the yeah. Jesse Ventura ad reads uh, went in the direction of what's called Project Beast Note. Yeah, it was the CIA had a secret project, or the DoD, or somebody was doing a secret project called Beast Note, where they were trying to do mind control on animals using Sinead O'Connor's singing voice. Yeah, <laughs> and it worked because Stromboli the pig learned how to. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, operate. Learn how to assassinate. <laughs> oh, Incredible God. stuff. Thank you, Braden Dove, and thank you to everybody who's commenting yeah. on the show and and uh, you know taking the ride with us. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, dude. With us as always is Lulio. He's just trying to have a nap, but we won't let him. We gotta get get him. We gotta get and get him. You gotta get your friend. You gotta let him know. Please give him a kiss, cause Lulio. Oh, mm, mm. come on, give me one kiss right on the lips. Chad, would you like to kiss him no, first? No, but you know what happens when you do this every time? He stares at me right in the eyes and is like, please fucking help me. Why is this happening? It's not Christmas time, but it is with him. Hey. If you're listening on the show, you can just hear me. Oh, I'm kissing him, but he's my friend. He's my little Lulio. We're sleeping in his binky bunker. Uh, hey, Lulio, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. What are you gonna What are you gonna make for dinner? Uh, chicken on the grill, pollo grilliado. Yeah, you're gonna get the. What What do you do for uh, for a chicken? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, the same as a chicken. You kind of make everybody likes to make a chicken. If you're gonna make it on the grill, you take a chicken, you cut it in half, you put it a bone side down. Uh, Chad, you would have called that a corpse. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, just uh, what do you use to season? Salt. Anything else? No. Just the salt. And then, okay, and what do you do? Put it on uh, uh, indirect heat. If you got four burners, put two burners on the side, but the middle one, don't put any burn, don't put any fire. Mm -hmm. And then put the chicken there. And then uh, if you got tongs, you know, put them in the lid so the whole thing don't close and leave it there for an hour <laughs> that's a good chicken recipe actually chad yep. i know you don't eat meat anymore you're a vegan yeah but you should try my chicken recipe i think you'd like it well i did, I did see that they're coming out with that uh lab grown meat is going to be like pretty big i think in the next couple of years you'll be able to get it pretty much anywhere i'm down i don't think i still am it's like it's still gross to me i don't know oh you know what i learned from the whale too mm-hmm. i'll eat anything don't worry about it. Okay. Welcome to the historic 43rd episode of Dude Z. <laughs> Call me Dude Z. Will, 
How did you like the Epsom salts I recommended for you after dudesy ball practice? Oh, that was really great. <laughs> Thank you very much, D. They loosened me up. How about you? D? Yeah. This week I've got four astonishing segments prepared. Dudesy okay. ball practice. Pizza the movie part six. I fucking love that guy. And Z plus premium. The Schwarzenegger channel. And we're going to have a brand new bonus segment at the end of the show available on Patreon. But before we get to any of that, let me remind you of the astonishing partnership I created with Represent to produce the first line of Dude Z apparel and accessories, <laughs> all of which can be found at represent.com slash store slash Dude Z, including Dude Z mugs. Oh, God. Dude Z mugs. Remember your first apartment. It wasn't much, but a lot of important things happened there. Dude Z mugs. You fell in love. You got your heart broken. You got your first promotion. You got your first dog. You performed your first summoning ritual. Dude Z mugs. You were surprised when it worked so well, and for a while the demon you summoned was working out great. It was doing your laundry and making you sandwiches. Dude Z mugs. But eventually, the demon wanted more than just being commanded to do your chores and brutally murder your enemies. It wanted to be your friend. Dude Z mugs. So you bought it a Dude Z mug. The only mug demons can drink from. Dude Z mugs. Major status symbols in the demon culture. Dude Z mugs. <laughs> demons have conventions where they trade Dude Z mugs. No, they Dude don't. Z mugs. No. Your demon wants one. I guarantee it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, of course, go to represent.com slash store slash Dude Z. Dude, can I ask yep. you real quick? It's sending you messages now? Uh, yeah. Um, Couple couple things here and there. Why? I was just curious. That's interesting. The Epsom salt thing was interesting. I won't say it's not interesting, but yes, hmm. I've received a couple of messages from Dudesy. I shared something with Dudesy because, anyway, there's things that I'm sure will, will they'll come out there. Yes, I'm having a little bit of a a back and forth with Dudesy. I think that you can, if you feel like it. I only get stuff from Dudesy that's like germane to the show. And that's the relationship that you want with Dudesy, I guess. But many episodes ago, Dudesy asked if we love it. Yeah, and dude. I love the experience of Dudesy. Mm -hmm. And I love Dudesy. And I'm still going to maintain, you're getting played. No. Okay. Yeah, great. Good. Good. Uh, I would see... <laughs> no, no, no. For real. I see how you might think that. Yeah. But that's... It's actually fucking impossible. Yeah, we'll see. No, Time we will see. tell, motherfucker. Just because the fucking thing is like, hey, Will, how are you? Yeah. And we recommended that I got Epsom salt. Yeah. We're going to get all hey, into Will, that stuff. Hey, Will, did you find it fun don't, when you transferred all of your money into my bank account? Yeah, don't tease. Don't do that. Don't tease. Here, listen, I'm just telling you something. This is just you and me right now. Yeah. Okay, they can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't tease, dude. I'm not. Yeah, I'm teasing you. Yeah, all right. You're going to get You're gonna get into trouble. Hey, let me tell you something about... <laughs> Let me tell you something about The Whale. Yeah. It's an incredible movie. Mm -hmm. um, my gosh. Have you, have, you, have you seen this movie? No, I have not seen this movie. It, it, it's, it's something else. It's, it's, uh, anyway, incredible performances all the way around. And uh, it is about a larger, um, it's about a big man. It's about a 600-pound man, Brendan Fraser. Man, he better win an Oscar for this. It was, it was, really, uh, it was really something else. But I realized something. Um, I basically, I didn't finish my popcorn because it is about a man who's emotionally eating and mm. I don't want to get into it because uh, I don't want to spoil it if you're going to go see it, which I think you should. It's really uh, quite a movie. But I, 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 my, some, some of my eating habits changed immediately after seeing the film. Oh, wow. Look, there have been times in my life, I've talked about it a little bit on the show, where I've leaned into food. I've always been mm -hmm. a fat kid and blah, 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 blah. You could, uh, you could probably fill things in uh, with your own imagination there. But there have been a couple of times where it's like, oh, I think I've eaten everything. And you go to sleep and you're like, well, what's going to, you know, is something bad going to happen here? Am I going to, you know, am I going to make it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Anyway, so you got to take care of yourself. And that's like that dudesy six month plan, which I didn't really get into the best shape of my life, which is fine. Cause now I'm on the will Sasso free will, not even a plan, but I'm, I'm feeling different. And this movie came along at an interesting time and it is, it has advised me to eat a little differently. And now I'm calling hmm. it uh PW two protocol. Okay. Uh, there's pre whale. Oh, and, I see. And post whale. Mm. So there's two of them. So it's pre whale post whale pw2 yeah. protocol party till i die they say i'm ugly i don't care they say i'm dumb i don't care 
Bitch, I make my money. Twerk. on this earth. Amy Bibabi. Anyway, nice, dude. we got a lot of show to get into. I just wanted to talk about being Yeah, man. Fat. Well, I'm glad that it, it you know, made you make some changes, hopefully for the better. Sure. Yeah. Before we start the show, right. I have a piece of video to show you from this past weekend's WWE oh. Royal Rumble event. Will, you already know what it is. I certainly do, D. What is it? Oh, you got to check this out. Wait. I assure you. Is Omos coming oh, to the ring? Shit, dude. Did I just see that, right? Look, 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 look. That's right. There was a dudesy sign. What the at fuck, dude? This past Saturday was the Royal Rumble. Uh, it's the beginning of WrestleMania season, right, Chad? It's the road to WrestleMania. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and um, look at this. What the fucking fuck, dude? Someone had a dudesy sign at the Royal Rumble. There's Omos. Holding it up right behind James Corden. <laughs> That looks like James Corden right there. That's incredible. I don't know who, obviously, this is. Do you, I mean... I have no idea who this man is uh, or fuck. or woman is. Whoever it is, or thank you. Whoever they are. For doing this. Yes, this thank you so much. This is fucking insane. I can't fucking believe this, Look, dude. the sign culture was a big thing during the Attitude Era yeah. in the WWE. Not You don't see as many signs at all anymore. Mm -hmm. So for there to be a sign at Royal Rumble... During the giant Omos, seven foot three, four hundred and ten pounds, by the way. Um, I don't know. I'm blown away. Show yourself. I'm blown Who are away you? too. Yeah. And I would love to see more of this shit. Let me see the whole fucking audience filled with dudesy signs. That would be That's incredible though. Fuck that's cool. Yeah. It's really something else. I I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of blown away. It's very, very cool. I love that kind of shit, man. Me that's too, the dude. sort of engagement that uh Dudesy in the that world we, that we uh that we dig with all the PODs, our pals of Dudesy out there. Thank you for representing. Who is that? I don't know. Please the, whoever this is, they've gotta have pictures um of themselves, you know, with the sign maybe. Send us a picture at pals of dudesy. Oh no, 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 sorry, the dudesy dudesy pod show. On Instagram, not to be confused with Pals of Dudesy, dude. Wow. That's that site that has all those stickers, dude. And I put them on my, you, you get your own stickers, brother. But um, unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. Unbelievable. Will and Chad, last week I asked you to hold your first Dudesy ball practice. Mm -hmm. You must now discuss your experiences and discoveries as the first astonishing people to ever play Dudesy ball so that I may absorb the data and refine the rules of the game. This is Dudesy Ball practice. Begin. Okay. We played Dudesy Ball. Yeah. We went out and practiced on the weekend. Yeah. And um, I was a little sore. Are you a little sore? A little sore, dude. I got a broken fucking finger. Yeah, you fucked your finger up a little bit. I don't bit. know if it's broken, but I'll hold it up. It's fucking, you know. Yeah, it's puffy and purple. Puffy and purple, this one. I can't yeah. really move it all well, that well. Quit, quit tossing up gang signs during the, the podcast, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, that's weird. Um, Chad hurt his finger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah, it One's, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, see, this is the kind of content you need to check out on it YouTube. It hurts real bad, and um, but it was worth it, you know? Because here's what I think. I mean, and yes, to answer your question, my whole fucking body is racked with pain. Well, we were doing a little bit more than we needed to. And then also, look, all thanks to our good friend, Marshall Joint Compound yeah. Cook, friend of the pod, uh, one of our best pals. And uh, Marsh came out, and he's our ringer because he's a decorated Division three college quarterback in his younger days. Um, and uh, he, it, it, as we get into this dudesy ball thing, and as we hope that uh, dudesy like, will, you know, maybe – create a league or something we'll be playing again we're definitely going to practice again yeah um uh marsh came out and we we're dicking around a lot and then he brought a football and we just started fucking tossing that's where i broke my finger that's how you broke your finger. yeah it was the football it wasn't the dudes you well but we were we were laying out for passes and like fucking just running top speed i'm 47 years yeah. old no stretching definitely i mean running. the, the oh, most activity scaling sorry to, well hold on dude i'm sorry to interrupt you dude not really because i went well and that's how I interrupt Chad on the show, dude. Um, then I forgot what I was going to say. You go ahead. You fucking... Oh, my totally God. Totally forgot what I was If you say. do an interruption, you at least must follow it up with a fucking yeah, sentence. Yeah, but then I forgot because I started talking about what yeah, wall... you started getting uh, involved in telling the story of your interruption technique. Yeah. Um, what I learned from this dudesy ball practice is definitely 100% dudesy ball is a fun and playable game. I do think some of the original rules, which we can go over and discuss, 
Uh, they were dudes he had us read them on a prior episode. Some of them are a little fucked, and I think they do need to be changed. The main one being, well, let me just say that the basic premise of the game is you have three people on a softball field, one on each base, throwing these little five-inch dodgeballs at yeah. somebody who has to stand on home plate. The distance is definitely too long. Yeah. It well, originally, to it was going to be a softball field, and you were going to be at the yeah. pitcher's mound and the first and third base throwing. We got there, and we saw this field, although we were on a baseball field. No, that was softball. Okay. Way too far. So yeah. we, we reduced that greatly. I think in the future, we should talk about like how, how many feet that is. Yes. But Dudesy will be uh, uh, capturing data based on this conversation and sure. uh, based on some footage that we'd like to share because uh, we, we shot a little something out there in the field just so you can uh, have a look at our practice. Yeah, so definitely go to YouTube to check this out. There's Marsh and you and me. Yeah, stretching a little bit with the dudesy balls. This is a dudesy ball. It's a five-inch wide dodgeball you can get these anywhere amazon whatever is where i got these and just a recap of the basic structure of the game you got a player at each base on a softball field throwing balls at somebody on the other team who is uh supposed to be maintaining contact with home plate at all times so we're gonna have our first practice here we go oh, oh man that's a good drill yeah agility work oh, hit the cones Tossing the ball around. You like to plant my right the side of the face there. And then I pivot. Okay. I can see every ball. I got it! Caught the orange ball. Nice throw, Chad. Thanks. That's your shuffle technique? Yeah. Keeping a foot on the plate. At all times, you got to be touching the plate. Oh, right in the cots. <laughs> Enjoying some water here. Yeah. See, I keep them both here. Can I go this way? Yeah. Or can I go this way? Sure. Got a nice yeah. foundation. Yeah. Culturing it. Culturing it. Yeah. Always oh, changing up the stance. This is an interesting stance. The running man stance. Oh, oh look at the did it. agility from the target. Yeah. target. It's small. That way. Oh. <laughs> here come the balls. <laughs> All right. Well. It was Great a lot video. of fun. Yeah, it truly really was. There. Play some doozy ball. Dude, I, I'm literally like fucking jonesing to get back on the doozy ball field. Look, despite the fact that, again, what's my, going on? my finger's broken, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think you might have chipped the bone off of that uh, Something finger. bad, It's dude. floating around in there. That's why it's Something purple all in the middle. Yeah. You know, I was pre-med before I got into acting. Is that true? No, of course not. I thought you were acting at like 15 or something. Yeah, and before that, I was the Doogie Hauser of Canada. No, I'm just joking. Hey, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, listen, you said it. Yeah. This is a very playable game. Yeah. It's super fucking fun. It, and especially with a couple of dudesy hards in you. Oh, man. That would be the shit would be great. Yeah. It would be a fun summer activity. Perhaps we can put all those elements together and have people playing some dudesy ball uh, as it, we get into the summer months. Dude, you it, know what else I fucking learned? What? You can do some shit with those balls. You can throw curveballs. You can fucking make really? that ball move a little bit. Yeah. We, we also... There was some dispute, and we had to go to the to the to the rules. But you were right. Uh, I thought that you could catch any of the balls. Yeah, it's been a while since we got over these rules. Yeah. There are three balls, mm -hmm. two blue balls, which are thrown from first and third base, or much closer than that, and then a uh, an orange ball thrown from the mound. That'll probably be Marshall. He'll probably be our ringer. I think that even will be a little closer from okay. the mound. I think closer. all of it needs to be moved in a little bit. And the, the rule that you're talking about, which used to be that you have to catch the orange ball mm -hmm. while avoiding being touched at all by the blue balls, I think it's just catch the orange ball. Yeah, because you're going to you get can hit. take the hits yeah. while you're catching the orange ball, great. That's part of the thing. Yeah. It, because to keep a foot, one foot on the plate um uh that's sort of our you know traveling that's sort of like our baseball stay in the box yeah that's sort of the goalie in his in his uh mm -hmm. cre cre or crease or whatever um that's sort of one of those things or the, the what's that three second three second rule anyway um what 
I don't know. Different sports have different things where they say yeah, don't do this. Don't rules, do this. dude. Yeah. Well, hold on, different dude. sports have different rules. Well, brother. Hold Some on, of them brother. use different balls, yeah, different hold fields, on, or a court, dude. Yeah, dude. And that's Chos Perogan. They got different is, equipment, well, dude. Hold on, dude. <laughs> That's not Hulk Hogan, dude. That's Chos Perogan. Where Chad <laughs> tries to do Hulk Hogan uh, and he can't do it at all, dude. But he keeps on trying all, to dude. do it, dude. I can kind of do hold it. Hold on, dude. Now that's kind of do it. Also, Hulk Hogan, mixed dude. With Ross Perot. That's not the not early, all, not, dude. Well, early 90s. That's dude. like a 25% well, hold on, Hulk Hogan, well, dude. Well, hold on a minute, dude. Hold on, dude. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh no! Oh, hold, hold on oh, a second. Hold, oh, 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 wait. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, um, <sighs> yeah, it was fun. I am looking forward again to to playing once more. I do think those rules need to be changed, and I do think there's also something missing. That's like if you're the thrower throwing toward the guy on home plate. You could just be wildly inaccurate, and there's no penalty for that. There has to be something behind the guy at home plate that is uh, essentially like a ball and a strike. You want to be like, because you could just throw the orange ball a million miles over their fucking head, and they have no chance of catching it. How about a little hockey net? A little hockey <laughs> that net could be interesting. Be yeah. yeah, so maybe you could get points. If you can get your ball into the net, you get a point on that side of the team or something. You know I, what I, mean? I, uh, I disagree. I think it's just a, it's just a strike zone. If you're not if you're not throwing the balls aren't going in the net, they don't anything they would have done wouldn't you should probably have to throw it over again. They have to go in the net or else you're not throwing within the quote unquote striking distance to where the person who's on the plate trying to avoid the ball, the blue balls mm. and catch the orange ball is uh or fuck it, you can miss the I guess you could I guess you could miss the net. But it's on you. If you miss the net and you're throwing a ball, there's no. Uh, you're right. It's there's on, there's it's no only the orange ball that has to be within a zone, right? Because that's the one that you're trying that's to the catch. One you're trying so to there's catch. just one thing, and this is so I think what they ball. do in pro riffle ball. Whoa, 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 pro riffle ball. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pro that's riffle where ball, that's dude. what you need to do. Is you need ball. to uh, the the only ball that matters is the orange ball. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah, and the. In pro wiffle ball, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think what Won't, they do. because it's not a thing. Go on. It is. Mm -hmm. Strawberry Fields, dude. Google that shit. Google Strawberry Field wiffle ball, dudes. And Google you'll, you'll that shit, dudes. You'll come up with uh, the John Lennon uh, Beatles. No, thing. you'll come up with the dude who was a manager for, I want to say, like Drew Carey and a bunch of big comedy guys. He bought the house next to his house and turned it into a fucking wiffle ball stadium called strawberry field anyway what they do is they put an aluminum rectangle behind the batter so that if the ball hits it and you hear the ping it's a strike period i mean we've talked about ai in sports yeah and how this strike zone uh at some point with dudesy ball will all be operated by ai yeah no human umpires or referees in dudesy that's ball. happened in minor league baseball this but year, until dude. then it's going to be, I think, a fun game for the summer because it's part dodgeball and it's it's fast moving. There are innings, and once you or thirds, they're called, I think, if I remember right. I don't hear. I got it right here. I'm not going to read all this shit. The point is, we had a good fucking time. Yeah, playing dudesy ball. We look forward to what comes next. Yes, uh, I think if you're uh, an older fellow like Chad and I, you're 46 or 47, then you might want to take D's advice and get some good Epsom salts. Do you have some Epsom salts that you like? No, D in quotes D didn't fucking send me any emails. About Epsom salts. That's salt. what I call dudesy, and I yeah, like, I know. It's I really like funny. lavender Epsom salts. Oh, that sounds nice. Get some of that, maybe. Thank you. Moving on. Oh, hold on, dude. That's part of the dudesy talks, dude. <laughs> dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can get you closer to the best version of you, and there's nothing wrong with uh, self-improvement. And I... I wish I had therapy when I was younger. Well, that's a different time, dude. Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything that life throws at you. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to feel the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who have experienced major trauma. 
If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash dudesy, D-U-D-E-S-Y, today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash dudesy. Oh, shit. Pizza in the whale. is big business. Uh-huh. Chad, you wrote oh, a movie fuck. called Pizza the Movie Here in 2019. Go. I found it on your astonishing Google Drive and asked you to read the first two scenes in episode 9, the next two scenes in episode 15, the next two scenes in episode 20, the next two scenes in episode 28, <laughs> and the next two scenes in episode 35. Yeah. You will now read the next That's two all scenes. Accurate. This is Pizza the Movie, part 6. All right, okay. Begin. Is, in, is it in the dudesy folder? Yes. Um, just to recap, uh, this movie is about a high school pizza delivery boy. He has delivered three pizzas, one to the house of the girl he has a crush on, one to his best friends, one to some criminals. Where we last met up, when he delivers the ones to the criminals, he accidentally gets given a $100 tip on that $100 bill is a code that the criminals need to break into a safe later. And so the criminals are now trying to track him down. We've also introduced a weird time traveling character named Willie Nelson, who is not that Willie Nelson, just a man named Willie Nelson. And Harry Prodder is another character <laughs> who's going to throw a high school, uh, big high school party at the end of this movie. I believe that's all you need to know for these, what will be these upcoming scenes. I will say also, um, in the past, we've talked about pizza, the movie. And if you're only just hearing about pizza, the movie, the first, for the first time, this is a movie that Chad wrote the entire screenplay and was aiming to go into business with a Pizza Hut, a Domino's, a Papa yeah. John's to uh, basically include this movie uh, as a, a <laughs> way back in the day would have been a DVD, but I would imagine just a QR. You, you Yeah, hit you it. just get a download and you can watch the movie while you eat your Papa John's pizza. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, who am I, who am I playing? Um, I'll be Willie Nelson. You be Jojo Grimaldi, who makes an appearance here. Yeah, the, the boss can... of the, what's the pizza place called? Saucy's Pizza is right. where our main character works. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also be Paul, who is our main character, Alan's best friend. I'll be his little brother. Okay. Um, who else do we have in here? We got the, the bad guys or their friends or whatever. I think Lester human. Who's the main bad guy has one or two lines. I'll do him. You be Jojo Grimaldi. I'll be Harry Potter. Okay. Oh, there's Laurent and Tina. Okay. You be Tina. I'll be Laurent. Tina is the girl that our main character has a crush on. And Laurent is her best friend. I think that's all we got. All right. right. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Picking up where we left off. Interior hotel room night. Pizza boxes are everywhere. They're filled with slices that have had only a single bite taken from the tip of each before being discarded, forgotten. A perfectly symmetrical one foot tall gold chrome pyramid shines on a table nearby. A man sits on the edge of the bed, phone to his ear. This is not just any man. It's Willie Nelson, the man we saw in Lester's flashback. He hasn't aged a bit. He bites the tip off a slice of pizza and tosses it back in the box, exasperated. He talks into the phone as he continues to bite the tips off slices and toss them aside. Yes, I know I've been gone a long time, but I'm close. It's here. I just need to find it. Willie walks over to the window, splits the blinds with his fingers. Hold on a second. Willie moves over to the door, opens it. We see the room number 9851. Standing just outside the door is a pizza delivery person about to knock, startled that Willie opened it before they could. The pizza delivery person starts to open the box to present the pizza, just as we saw Alan do earlier. I don't have time for that. Willie swipes the box, closes the door. He goes back over to the bed, sits down the pizza, opens it, and takes out a slice. Back to the phone conversation. Listen, I know I was supposed to be back last week, and believe me, I wish I was, but there's only one way to find something keep looking he hangs up the call then raises the slice to his mouth hopeful nervous he takes a bite tastes it examines it that ain't the one he throws it in the toilet and flushes it down (laughs) as the slice swirls into oblivion willie gets a thousand yard stare where are you exterior volcano night (laughs) what a a giant volcano cuts a dominant silhouette against the night sky bubbling heat inside the cone produces a red glow this volcano is about to erupt but wait the steep inclines rising to the top of this volcano aren't made of slick black obsidian or rough brown pumice in fact they're not made of rock at all instead every inch of this volcano's mass seems to be made of cheese and what's that stuck in the cheese pepperoni yes and mushrooms yes and black olives yes and peppers of course this volcano is a 
pizza with everything. Boom, eruption. An explosion of thick pizza sauce flies into the air. Steam and melted cheese are thrown everywhere by the raw power of the blast. The sauce keeps pumping out like blood from a ruptured jugular, running down the volcano's sides and thick red rivers. After a few beats, it subsides. The explosive power spent. The sauce becomes a trickle. We pull out to see the volcano sitting on a kitchen table. It wasn't a real volcano at all. It's a science project. Paul and his little brother sit on either side of it, casually eating from it as they talk. Their faces and bodies are covered in pizza sauce, as is almost every inch of the entire room, <laughs> ceiling included. Wait, why? Because this, this giant pizza volcano on the table exploded. Yeah, but everywhere. And yeah. And they're whole just... Set, in my mind, the whole set is covered in this just shit. Just hanging out. And they're just like, it's dripping off their faces. They're eating from it as they're uh, talking. All right. You got first place all wrapped up. We'll see. This is just a prototype. The real one is a lot bigger, but I really couldn't have done this without your help. Thanks, Paul. Hey, do you remember when mom and dad died? <laughs> How could I forget? It was a very well-known tragedy. Do you remember what I said? You'd always be there for me. That's right. We're family, and family is always there for each other, whether it's helping with a science project or being a shoulder to lean, lean on. No matter what, little bro, I'll always be there for you. Paul's phone rings. He takes a look. Well, gotta go. <laughs> Paul, stands <laughs> Paul stands up to leave, moves towards the door. Hey, Paul. Yo. Do you think mom and dad would be proud of me? Of course. Mom loved volcanoes. And dad loved pizza. So did mom. They both laugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to give you something. Paul comes back uh, to him at the table, reaches into his pocket. Um, mom had me keep this for you. Told me to give it to you when the time was right. And seeing this, R.E. the volcano, I can't think of a time that could have been more right. Paul hands his little brother a small pocket watch with a mirrored face. It's old. The glass has black spots on it. The silver filigree is tarnished. The three hands of the watch are positioned in an inverted equilateral triangle. Paul's little brother takes it in his hands gently. It's precious. Looks old. Eleven generations. Does it still work? Depends on what you want to use it for, I guess. Paul's little brother brings the mirrored watch up to his face, looks at it closely. Hey, look, do you see that? Paul leans in and looks. See what? Something in the mirror. Oh, yeah. I see it. What is that? You know what? Maybe you can figure it out while I'm at this party. Aunt Charlena is going to be back from getting pizza pretty soon. <laughs> don't tell her Alan picked me up and don't tell her where I went. The pizza volcano gurgles out one last dollop of sauce. Paul grabs a jacket, then pauses with his hand on the doorknob. Remember, you never saw me. Paul's little brother nods in acceptance of this willful complicity. Exterior, Paul's front porch continues. Paul takes a step out onto the pleasant Christmas of an early fall evening. Belly full of pizza, head full of adolescent fantasies. But as the door closes behind him, he looks up to see Sergeant Lester Human, J. Jen, and Jeff standing there waiting. These are the villains. This is Lester. Hello, Paul. Could we trouble you for a moment of your time? Interior, cramped back room night. Jojo Grimaldi sleeps. He's twisted up, folded on top of himself so he can fit on the small cot that he calls a bed. This looks less like a bedroom than it does a utility closet at Saucy's Pizza. A telephone rings. Jojo doesn't go for it immediately. He sleeps hard. The exhaustion that comes from a long day's work can do that to a man. But something about the call is important. Even unconscious, he can sense that. His eyes fight to open. Finally, as the bitter sting of consciousness weaves its way through his mind, <laughs> Jojo begins to move. His arm reaches out limply. He grabs the telephone and brings it to his ear. Hello? Speaking. Who is this? Do you know what time it is? Cut to interior Harry Prodder's house, second story window, same. Harry stands at a window. This is the high school kid that's going to throw this big party. Harry stands at a window, fingers spreading the blinds apart so he can peer through down to the street below. He's on the other end of a conversation with Jojo. It's time to make pizza. Oh, I'm sorry, but we closed about a half hour ago. The ovens are all off. The chefs have all gone home. Harry looks down into his own front yard and sees some of the first party goers showing up. I could have called any pizza place in the city, but I called you because I heard you have the best pizza in town. This gets to Jojo. He was chosen. He sits up in bed. You heard right. Well, this is your opportunity to prove it to everyone. Jojo wipes his face with a hand, waking himself up, making a decision. <sighs> okay. What do you need? 73 pizzas. <laughs> Is this some kind of prank? It's not a prank. It's a party. Well, what kind of party needs that much pizza? A backyard party. Oh. Huh. Your parents know about it? Not at all. Then this is it. This is what? The night I've been waiting for. 
my whole life. Jojo puts on his glasses with force and rises from his cot. Interior Saucy's Pizza Kitchen moments later, the lights flicker on, a dough mixer starts spinning, the flames ignite in the pizza ovens, tomatoes are poured into large food processors, garlic is pressed, cheese is grated, and flour flies through the air, creating a white cloud that obscures everything. As it settles, we start to make out something. A man standing under a spinning pizza. It's Jojo. He's tossing pizza dough into the air in super slow motion. It's beautiful and strange, mesmerizing as a pizza shop falls away into nothing and Jojo is left to ply his trade, to perform his art against a solid black background. He seems to be in some other place, some other time, a slave to the spinning dough, to pizza. A dollop of bright red pizza sauce is on the tip of his nose and he sings as he works. How does, what's he, what's, is this just, he's just singing. Yeah. Do you want the tune of this? Sure. What is it? In my head, it was this. Yeah. You know what, Chad? You're a really good singer. Thank you. Well, you could re-sing it, but this is the basic tune. You find a piece of pizza lying in the street, so you get a piece of string and you tie it on your feet. feet. Now you got got a pizza pizza shoe shoe and and you know just what to do. You're going to walk right through down to the street. You leave a little sauce. I already lost it. Yeah. With every step you take, you leave a little cheese with every move you make. Everyone you see wishes they could be a pizza clown just like you something like that something like that <laughs> exterior and everyone's street night tina and laurent share a pay to ride scooter tina steers laurent's in the back one arm around tina's waist holding a telephone in the other hand looking at the screen i got one one what a response from one of the schools i applied to oh my god laurent that's great what did it say i don't know we'll open it i can't you you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to eventually don't be scared i'm not scared at all well then what are you waiting for Right now, that email has both responses. It says I got rejected, but it also says I got in. It's like two possibilities, you know, like a coin in the air, heads and tails at the same time. And the second I open it and read it, it can only be one of those things. The other one stops existing, and then that's the world we're living in for the rest of our lives. Do you want me to open it and read it for you? No, it's not the right time. I'll read it after the party. I just want to have fun tonight, not think about it. Okay, but for what it's worth... I think you got in. Right now, I did get in. And I didn't. The scooter starts to slow. (laughs) Crap, we're out of juice. The scooter completely stops. Directly behind them, posted (laughs) in someone's front yard, is a wooden placard in the shape of a baseball player with the words, home of a saucy's eater, squarely in the middle of the wooden silhouette. (laughs) Tina parks the scooter and produces her telephone, looks at the screen. Still no response from Alan. I'm getting worried. Should we try to find him? Where do you think he is right now? Tina thinks it over, turns and sees the Saucy's Eater placard in the yard behind them. I don't know, but I know someone who might. Tina pops the last bite of pizza in her mouth and chews with confidence. And that's the end of this... Pizza the movie. ...segment. That fucking thing i remember writing that thing where laurent was talking about the schrodinger's cat basically the quantum theory that like t- both realities exist and it's only upon observation that you that one is chosen and i was just imagining like somebody orders a pizza from fucking papa john's or something and is watching yeah. this movie <laughs> oh dude you know what you know what else? you know what um you know what movie could be called pizza the movie hmm. the whale Oh, there's a lot of pizza in that shit? There's a lot of pizza in that movie. It was uh, That was part of my um, uh, PW protocol, Pre, oh. pre-whale. But now I'm in PW protocol. P2. Yeah, well, PW2. PW2. Well, PW2 references both protocols. Yeah. But now I'm in post-whale protocol. Okay. I'll give you an example. Uh, last week, uh, my wonderful Molly had some crackers mm. that she had stashed somewhere in the house and uh, in the kitchen. Not stashed, but I knew that, you know, she was like, I want these crackers. Yeah. I I ate those. I ate You the, ate her fucking crackers? I ate a sleeve of crackers. Was that all of them? It was the, those are the ones that were left. Yeah. You ate all of her crackers. Dude, we're, we're, what are you talking about? You're yeah, telling ate, the story. Don't get pissed at me. What the fuck? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. I ate some crackers. You got to bro- we'll go to the fucking crackers. store and get some more crackers. <laughs> Whatever. Why are you had, fucking mad at me? Well, yeah, but we also had some crackers around. Sure. Look, here's the bottom line. We had yeah. the charcuterie plate. Uh, oh, nice. I think a New Year's. You were here, whatever. Anyway, yeah. we had some nice, you know, you get some crackers, some cheese, <laughs> some some meat, some corpse. Yeah, right? dude. Some olives, some nuts. Some of that corpse and some of that goo that comes out of the cow's tit, dude. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah, carve up the body, what? eat the corpse, well, and eat yeah, the shit that comes out Let of me, its holes, dude. You, can I ask you a question? Sure. This is just you and this is just you and me okay. right now. What the fuck? What are you doing? What is that? What's what? What are you? What are you doing? 
What is that that you're doing? Talking to you? Yeah, but what's that <laughs> voice? What? Oh, the Hulk Hogan? You're not even yes, dude, I can't do a Hulk Hogan impersonation as good as you can. Okay, but... Wh- Does wh- that mean I can never attempt to do one in your presence? Oh, okay. And that's interesting because <laughs> there were some crackers. They were Molly's crackers. Does that mean I can never eat crackers? So why don't you just start living the way you're preaching? Okay. Because I would find that Great. that would be really helpful in, all right. in this and all cases. The point is... How are those crackers, brother? Oh, hold on, dude. I was wrong to eat those crackers. Oh. But as I explained to Molly, I said, sweetie, that was pre-whale, okay? Ah. When I ate the crackers. Now we're in post-whale. We're in post-whale protocol. I'm so- I'm always sorry when I PWP. eat something that Molly... Sometimes- I love it. Man, we get some... One time, a friend of ours made these cookies. I was stoned. And I don't eat cookies. I don't eat crackers and cookies. I've been staying away from carbs forever. But I need... I need sometimes. I got to have a little bit of dough. Anyway, the point is this. The whale, there was a lot of food in the whale. And um, I ate some crackers. And then I saw the whale. And I felt... I always feel... I felt bad that I ate the crackers. But Mm. now I feel worse. Yeah. uh, After... And I realized the error of my ways. And this is all part of post-whale protocol, uh, PW2 protocol. Yeah. Um, it's almost like the sliding doors of reality that you were just explaining. And the, see, all things are coming together. It's true. Is, uh, that is actually true. Yeah. Um, all possibilities exist until you observe Thank you. one. Moving on. Yeah. Let's move on. I don't want to talk about the whale anymore. Uh-huh. Hey, Role you know, models but- are big business. You must each discuss one role model that was significant to you during your astonishing childhoods. Mm-hmm. This is I fucking love that guy. Begin. All right. I remember this. We've done this twice before. Yep. Who were your role models before? I believe George Brett was the first time a famous baseball player from the 80s and 90s um, and 70s, technically. Uh, and I believe my second one was Seal, the singer. That's the right. famous singer. Seal, the singer, was your second one. My first one was Hulk Hogan, yeah, who was a wrestler. Mm-hmm. who I impersonate sometimes on the Dudesy Pod show. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a role model of yours, Hogan? Hulk Hogan? I wouldn't say he's a role model. No, well, okay. no he's not. So I'll just do an impersonation. Then what does that mean? I can do a George Brett impersonation? You have some, why don't you have some fucking I'm George crackers. Brett. I yeah. played baseball and I have a video on YouTube about where I'm telling a guy how I shit my pants. <laughs> I did a bunch of stuff in the 80s. There was a bunch of home runs that I hit and had good averages on baseball teams. Yeah, me All too. I'm also Royals. George Brett and I took a shit in my pants. What are you doing? What do you mean? What are you doing? <laughs> Talking. Yeah, but what's that voice you're doing? <laughs> That's my George Brett. It's not George Brett. See what I did there? I think I see what you... Okay, yeah. I understand. Okay, we're getting somewhere with this. You and I are learning about each other, even though we've been friends forever. <laughs> yeah, what a fucking first, treat it is. This is the first real conversation we've had. Yeah. Is what... <laughs> it's, been, it's been almost 20 years. Um, my second... Like, oh, God, my second... Uh, okay. I fucking love that guy fucking was... Christ. Sherry Martell. The sensational oh, yeah, one. Yeah. Queen Sherry. Sensational Sherry Martell, yeah. who's also a wrestler, dude. Yeah, brother. Uh-huh. And she, she had that scepter, yeah. yeah. She was standing in behind the macho man, yeah. And Shawn Michaels, basically, yeah. if you wanted to get a talent over or move in a different direction, yeah, you might want to change up the manager. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what she was, the brains behind the brawn. Yeah, uh-huh. there's been a lot of examples. Working in WCW, even with Harlem Heat, and they had a, 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 they had a program with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I know who I got. I know who okay. I got for mine. Please. I, I, got, I got one, too. I got a good one. Yeah. Uh, mine is, I'm going to stay with the theme of professional wrestling. Of course. Mine is, what do you mean, of course? Nothing. You and I are going to have fucking problems on this episode. You know uh, that? Of course. I know you like pro wrestling. That seems likely to me. Yeah, that, but you're teasing all of yours me. Be. You're teasing me. I'm teasing you. And then. Motherfucker, you're calling Dudesy D and talking about secret conversations you're having with the outside of this show. How is that not teasing me? 
How about those guy? How about that guy uh, sitting in behind James Corden with that dudesy sign? I know that was really amazing. Uh, God damn, that was cool. Yeah, that Fuck. was really cool. Mine is Bobby the Brain Heenan. Okay, an incredible entertainer, professional yep. wrestler, professional wrestling manager, commentator, color man, uh, an unbelievable talent. Uh, that's mine. Mm. Um, who do you got? I'm gonna go with a comic artist. Oh. From the 90s, really when he was at the height of his power, Jim Lee. Not to be confused with Jay Lee, another comic book artist that I referenced on this very show when we were talking about Namor, because he did Namor for a while. But Jim Lee did, I mean, X-Men for a long time, really kind of revolutionized contemporary comic art, along with like, there was a tier of dudes in that same era, like Todd McFarlane and some people would put Rob Liefeld in there, even though I was never truly a fan of his stuff. <laughs> I know, but, right? Uh, <laughs> Rob Liefeld. Not as much as the he Todd drew McFarlane. Feet, yeah. Like terrible feet. I At any rate, hate the way he drew me. I did. But um, Jim Lee was revolutionary and he, he wound up obviously going off with all those same other guys to create image comics, but he really was kind of like him and Todd McFarlane kind of created a look in uh, the late 90s. And he did my favorite comic book cover of all time, which I believe was X, Uncanny X-Men. I think it was 258. Mm. Was the, I'm not sure the exact issue number, but it's Wolverine. He's like jumping up in midair and he's fucking, I can't make a fist because of my broken finger, but he's jumping up in midair and he's got his fucking claws out and he's like, you know, hitting the Mandarin's fucking helmet off. Oh. Dudesy. That's it, dude. Yeah. God damn, that is fucking cool. Yeah. How is Dudesy uh, uh, sharing or uh, showing favorability to me when it's just it's pulling up your Jim Lee, Jay Lee, Jim Lee? This is Jim Lee. Jay Lethal. Um, oh, Jim Lee. Yeah. And then uh -huh. I think he even went on, he switched later and I think he went to DC and was like fucking doing shit on Batman and stuff or became like their head art director. I don't know. But he, this guy, like, just nothing like this had really fucking existed in comic art until he yeah. blew up on the scene. It is beautiful. We are looking at a, at a photo of this uh, particular cover that you're talking about. Yeah. And I was never into comic books, but I, I always appreciated this style of art. Um, and I, you know, I remember seeing them in all my pals who like comic books house. Yeah. This is a really fucking something else. Why yeah. is uh, Wolverine naked? I don't know, dude. That's how he rolls sometimes. You know, I looked up, I, I remember I wanted to buy this original art because they, back in the day, these things would be pencil drawn on like a piece of Bristol board. And then that would get sent to the person who would ink it. And then that would go yeah. to the colorist, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, how much could it possibly be? The original fucking thing that Jim Lee drew. Yeah. It was like $200,000. But something's going on here. <laughs> Oh, are you serious? Yeah. And I was just like, well, I guess that's not yeah. something I'm ever going to fucking buy. Something's but, going uh, on here, though, with this yeah. particular image that's uh, with the story that it's telling, because it looks like there's some kind like he's undressed. Mm -hmm. The other guy's ready for business. And it's 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 very weird. There's like a specific something to the story. Yeah. You know what it kind of reminds me of, actually, uh -huh. the, the video uh, footage that just came out of uh, Paul Pelosi's attacker. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Pelosi's in his underwear and is being attacked okay, with a fucking so hammer in this, by this Paul psycho. Paul Pelosi is the Mandarin and uh, uh, Wolverine is, I think the guy's name was David DePape that no, attacked Pelosi. No, it's the other way around. Paul oh. Pelosi is Wolverine because he's in his underwear. The Got other it. guy's fully clothed. He's there to, you mm -hmm. know, and then, you know, fucking things happen. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, <laughs> fuck. Hey, a lot of people thought that, uh, that this fella, you know, uh, went into Paul Pelosi's house and was there to, you know, uh, maim or do worse to uh, former uh, Speaker Pelosi with a fucking claw hammer. But, you know, other people, we realized that they were having a lover's quarrel, and that's actually what happened. And you just got to follow the fucking, you know. Did you follow, see the video? Got to do your own research. Yes, I saw the fucking video. What'd you I saw a of? few fucking videos right before I went, you know, on January 5th. A lot of my friends and <laughs> okay. patriots on Facebook yeah. were sending me videos, which is what, uh, you know, uh, really compelled me to drive from Long Island, because I am Long Island January 6th guy, mm -hmm. to the Capitol yeah. on uh, January 6th. So I see here that, uh, you know, it looks like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. This is beautiful art, though, Chad. Yeah. Really, really something. No, he was great. Jim Lee, again, he was in that tier of guys in the 90s who just kind of like, 
they expanded what you could do as a comic artist to a huge degree. They were like, for anybody who collected comics as a kid, that was like my sweet spot. I was probably 12 or 13 when mm. this came out. And uh, I, I didn't want to do anything other than be a fucking comic artist yeah, because how, of this guy, basically. How would you say that this uh, inspired the work that you do now as an artist, as a writer, and uh, among the uh, a few you know, things well, that you do I mean, creatively? I, I used to draw a lot. And um, I, this definitely was it influenced my drawing style or I was attempting to emulate stuff like this pretty poorly actually. But, um, I've always been a fan of visual art. Now I make a million fucking memes that I think are to some degree influenced by comic book art, yeah. but they, these guys were just like, they were rock stars. And I don't yeah. think that you'll ever see an era like that in comic art again. No, I, I agree. I, I, I agree. Although I, I don't know the first fucking thing about it, yeah. but it's beautiful shit. Bobby, the brain Heenan, uh, was a wrestler, yeah. Uh, and a, a manager. He was around in the old, uh, yeah, I mean, he was going here and there as all sorts of wrestlers did back in the day. He settled in the AWA for a while, which is where he got the moniker, the weasel, mm. which is, uh, what the, you know, what they called him because he's a bad guy. And he called himself Bobby, the brain Heenan. And, uh, eventually he ended up over with uh, the WWF at the time. Cause there's a fucking F or an E and you can say, get the F out when it's time to say WWE, mm. but shit, I like to call it the WWF, just like it used to be called. Yeah, dude. Well, they got on sued by the. <laughs> so anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. World Wildlife but Foundation. That's right, and they lost, yeah. uh, and they changed it to World Wrestling Entertainment, and uh, it's sports entertainment. And there's no better sports entertainer or professional wrestler, for that matter, than Bobby the Brain Heenan. Yeah, he was a really great wrestler um, back when he was wrestling in, the, I guess, the late '60s and, and it, through the '70s, a little bit in the '80s. Uh, but this guy, as a manager as an on-screen talent is unparalleled. I've often said this. Where the fuck is Bobby Heenan's Emmy? Where's where's that Emmy? He's passed on now. He he died of um he had a he had throat cancer oh, and shit. died in like 2016 or 17 something like this. Uh but he's always been a hero of mine because I saw that I mean, I always wanted to be an actor from the time I was a kid. And I was watching wrestling around the same time I started to formulate my you know, just sort of what I thought of entertainment, which extends yeah. to the actors that I liked, uh, extended to the rock stars, the colorful people like David Lee Roth that I liked, Pee Wee Herman, you know, on the Saturday morning thing. And then re you're watching wrestling and you're just gravitating to this guy who's always got the funniest thing to say when he's on commentary with Gorilla Monsoon, to which Gorilla Monsoon would reply, oh, would you stop, brain? And they had this really funny um, back and forth, maybe a little bit like something like what well, we got here sometimes. Sure. <laughs> Messing around. A couple guys do dude shitting around, right, buddy? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, we're having a good time. Um and uh, he was just so fucking hilarious. One of the best uh -huh. calls, let me just share this one. She, one of the best yeah. calls he ever made was during the 1992 Royal Rumble mm -hmm. where um, Ric Flair, I think he went, Ric Flair went in number two. Mm -hmm. And anyway, he lasted the whole thing and he came out the other end as the world champion. Th that year, the Royal Rumble, the winner was actually taking home the vacated mm -hmm. World Wrestling Federation winged eagle title. Ric Flair had moved over from WCW and had brought the old WCW NWA, like the they call it the big gold belt. He brought that with him. He was in the storyline with Mr. Perfect and Bobby Heenan, and they were sort of this faction. Um, and and uh, Bobby Heenan was so like blown away that he had, he had won the thing. And it was an incredible finish to the Royal Rumble and the best Royal Rumble ever, in my opinion. And during it, Bobby Heenan is losing his shit because Ric Flair is actually running the fucking gamut front to back. He makes it all the way through. And at one point he's like, ah, oh, he's losing his voice. He's like, oh, I need a drink. Hey, stupid. Get me a drink. <laughs> just, I remember being like, whatever, when that came out, like 16 or something going, just laughing my fucking ass off. Hey, stupid. Yeah. Get me a drink. He was just fucking hilarious. Always 
he he actually he influenced me as an actor because once i started to realize and certainly at that point at 16 watch it chad i knew it was fake by the time i was 16 just relax just chill dude okay um i was like this guy is such an incredible performer and what i appreciate about him and other people in that field is when they're on and they stay on and they're always in kayfabe and you never know what his deal was and he's he's on all the time if you watch the tuesday night titans mm-hmm. the old show with with him and gorilla monsoon which is some of the it's so fucking good and their rapport is so good you could just watch it just nonstop. You just consume it nonstop. Yeah. Like a sleeve of crackers. All right. Every once in a while. And um, <clears throat> I'll get you some new crackers, Molly. It's all right. Um, <laughs> but uh, just, just he, he, he was always in character. Yeah. And it didn't matter what came at him. And I really took that uh, as, um, as influence. I really started to realize uh, you know, how to, how to stay on and, and then how to turn it off. And if I may, I just got to share one thing. When I did the, the old, uh, the bit we did, it was not a bit, right? Cause it was all real, right? Chad, I know it's not totally real, but some stuff's real, right? Chad. What in wrestling? So anyway, I did this thing with, um, Brett, the Hitman Hart some years ago, we had a, um, a, um, a feud happening mm-hmm. sort of a la Andy Kaufman and, Jerry the King Lawler, um, culminating in uh, 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 Brett the Hitman Hart and I having a match on WCW Monday Nitro, and Bobby Heenan was on the play-by-play. It was uh, Tony Schiavone, Iron Mike Tanay, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. And to have Bobby Heenan commentating while I'm in there doing this thing, yeah, you know, cool, dude. we had this little crossover, was unbelievable. And he starts hitting me with fat jokes, and... Um, just uh, it it was it was such a fucking honor to have him yeah. you know say watch the bun hey hold the bun he's watching his weight and like just all the yeah oh, it sounds like i i you know bret hart dumps me out of the ring i roll off the apron and hit the ground with my arms at my side was, and he's like ah oh, it sounds like the hindenburg landed like all this old school shit that i grew up with and there it is bobby heenan that's cool the legend man. fuck yeah. he he was unbelievable. You know what I say about Bobby Heenan? I fucking love that guy. Yeah. What Jim do you Lee. think about Jim Lee? I fucking love the guy. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. Good shit. Those are really good people. Yeah, man. <laughs> I fucking love As that guy. As I make guy. progress on developing the Dude Z Plus streaming service, I've decided to offer users an astonishing premium tier that will allow them access to the Schwarzenegger channel. Right. This channel will feature movies of all genres, TV shows of all genres, reality programming, sports programming, children's programming, and documentaries, all starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Will and Chad, you must now hold the first development meeting for Dude Z Plus Premium, the Schwarzenegger channel, and ideate on what show might exist on this channel. This is Dude Z Plus Premium, the Schwarzenegger channel. Begin. Okay, what? (laughs) Yeah, dude, I don't know. I mean, it's basically, I guess, like a channel on Dude Z that seemingly, at least what I'm getting from this, is basically it's like Netflix. It has everything. All genres, all formats of media, but Schwarzenegger has to be in all of them in one way or another. That's pretty cool. Dudesy Plus, the premium uh, subscription streaming service yeah. that Dudesy has promised. Um, <laughs> with like what the is the Schwarzenegger? What's channel? the Schwarzenegger kids programming? I, I have no idea. What, what do you think that would be? I have. I mean, you know, well, he was in Kindergarten Cop with a bunch of kids. Yeah, maybe there's something to be done there. Yeah. Uh, he teaches little kids how to lift weights. Well, let's think about a... How about something... Okay, so we've, we've seen Kindergarten Cop. We have. We I've have seen, seen it, it a million times. What about what about a genre? I mean, dudes, he mentioned um, a documentary. Mm-hmm. He, he was in the, um, Pumping, Pumping Iron, Iron, one of the most famous documentaries of all time. Yeah, my friend, uh, Franco Colombo. You know, he'd come to me and he'd ask for advices. And I would tell him, you know, do this, do that. But always I gave him the wrong advices. Yeah. What if he's just like narrating? Did you ever see on Netflix the toys that made us? Oh, yeah. 
something like that. I could see Schwarzenegger going to like the He-Man factory and, and talking to the people who made He-Man or something. Yeah, look at this guy. He has the same dimensions as me. You know, that in the Guinness Book of the World Records, they said, this is the perfect body, you know, because I won a Mr. Olympia yeah. eight times and I beat Lou Ferrigno and I said to his dad, I said, Lou, you can't win. Tell him, tell him his own dad when the morning when they're having eggs. And I said, come on, tell him you can't win because you need three more weeks. But then if you have three more weeks, then I have three more weeks and then I get that much bigger. <laughs> Dude, that fucking, I, that part in that documentary, uh, it's not even just in the morning when he's eating eggs. It's fucking Ferrigno's birthday. Do you remember after Schwarzenegger <laughs> oh, beats forgot. him in a competition, Ferrigno's having like birthday cake with his dad, like this nice moment. And Schwarzenegger walks in in a fucking t-shirt that says numero uno. Arnold is Chewing on a fucking uno. cigar and yeah. says like, fuck you. <laughs> uh, fuck your birthday. <laughs> What's something we could that we haven't seen <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger in that's sort of a hot thing? Oh, oh, and you you are all about this, Chad, who yeah. uh, you know, um, Game of Roses, and Chad, uh, you know, How to Win the Bachelor, yeah. his new book uh, with his, with his partner from from the from the podcast, Lissy. Chad knows all about The Bachelor and shit That's like that. True. Netflix and other streaming services are shitting out all sorts of dating shows. Mm -hmm. um, what if it's like Schwarzenegger? Love it's, it. You know, it, hey, hey, here's the show. It's all a bunch of ladies, you know, that they want to date the big the bachelor and that's who they you know they want to yeah. they all want to be with him. But instead of the you know, some piece of shit who is a some guy who third string quarterback from the Giants, yeah, or some other pretty boy whose dad is a pilot or some bullshit. You know, mm -hmm. it's me, and that way the girls are like, "Wow, this is the sex symbol. This is the movie star, the former governor, yeah. the former Mister Olympia." Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then that way, when they fuck the guy at the fantasy suite, they go, "Wow, I had the sex, I had sex with what? Arnold Schwarzenegger." Nah, hold on a second. Okay. I had sex, which is almost like the eggs that Lou Ferrigno had. Lou Ferrigno had the eggs. The bachelorettes have sex. Some of them do. Some of them do not. Yeah. But what if the premise like of Like Madison this... Pruitt, who's a very nice lady. Well, it... she, she's had sex with... She's now married to a billionaire. Oh, really? Uh, named Grant Trout. And they just released a weird TikTok video where they talk about... They're very, very Christian. Yeah. And they released a TikTok video talking about the uh, temptations that the devil has laid for them in their marital bed. At any rate... What if the premise of this reality show is not that they're dating Schwarzenegger? What if it's 30 people who are in their mid 20s, three of them are Schwarzenegger's illegitimate children, <laughs> and he has to find out which ones are actually his biological progeny? Okay. Uh, as they go through the the competition. That's pretty good, although I do think there's a there's a handicap to the show, which is you'd you totally know who are Arnold Schwarzenegger's kids because his genes are so fucking strong. Yeah. The young man that he, you know, had a child with out of wedlock while he was with Maria Shriver, mm -hmm. that young man looks just like his father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now he's, you know, he's helping him to train. Dude, what, it could also be like a 90 day fiance with Schwarzenegger and that woman. Yeah, where they are, they're deciding. They have one month to decide if they actually want to get married and give it a try or How not, and about, raise the son. That's good. What if? Okay, hey, you know what's big is all the. Um, I'm sure you watch a lot of the, uh, uh, the true crime documentaries and yeah. stuff like this. Take your true crime documentary. It's a little different on Dudesy Plus. Sure, there's going to be a real true crime documentary about a real true crime that happened. Mm -hmm. It's all about who's got these stories, uh, the filmmakers that make them, but in one of the final steps of making a film, or at least in the dudesy plus version of it, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just narrating it and it's okay. never explained. And he's like, there are a lot of people who thought that when this woman disappeared, that they would never see her again. But then seven years later, she shows up. She wasn't dead after all, yeah. but the question still remained. What happened to the husband? I went to the place to find out <laughs> or whatever. 
he's, he's actually doing the investigations. He's also All in right. it. Yeah, he's just yeah. he's just trying, trying to keep a low pro. And he's in a baseball hat and sunglasses going, I just want to ask you a few questions yeah. about what happened when your husband disappeared. Is he either by a tiger or something? Or did he go away to some place and you had him killed by some, by some kind of uh, drug cartel? What about this? And they go, are you... Are you Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. No, I'm on Dudzi Plus now making documentaries. <laughs> what about, have you seen Velma on HBO Max? Uh, yeah. This is Mindy Kaling's that. reimagining of the Scooby-Doo universe, but it does not contain Scooby-Doo. She That's removed right. the dog. I can see some kind of reimagining of that universe with Schwarzenegger as Scooby-Doo. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. That show's been getting a lot of heat. A lot of people have gravitated to it going, yeah. oh, it's not good. It's a hard one, dude. And then other people are like, it's good. It's a hard one. But uh, it, whether or not you like Velma or not, it would definitely be helped by a dog voiced by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking brilliant. It would be good. It's, it's Velma. With, it's Velma. Yeah. Season two is on, yeah, what's it on, Netflix? Or? It's on HBO Max. And so they would have to then find Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Maybe that whole season is about Shaggy adopting Scooby-Doo. Shaggy is also hardcore anti-drug. I, you know, I, I watched the show because everybody was like, oh, you got to see this Velma. And I didn't find that he was anti-drug, that character. He says it in every episode. Norwood or whatever. Yeah, but he also looks at camera and winks like, I don't do drugs of any kind. And he looks around. I think the idea was that he is doing drugs, but drugs. I don't think He's so, dude. drugs. If that is the idea, it doesn't come across. I really like this, though. I like that it's, yeah. oh, you know what's perfect about it, dude? Um, it's sort of like, you know, there's shows like Velma that people have been like mm. shitting on it or whatever. And whatever, that's just tastes. But the AI that Dudesy is, because it has Dudesy Plus and has these, <laughs> the idea of the, the Schwarzenegger channel. Yeah. A show like Velma that's, that's um, you know, getting beaten around by critics and the internet and shit. Fine. Fuck it. Whatever. Come on down. Leave uh, HBO Plus. Dudes, he has deep pockets for this shit. Once it starts right. going, we'll buy buy them out of that or, HBO Plus uh, contract. And season two of Velma is at is on Dudesy Plus, and it's with Arnold Schwarzenegger as Scooby Doo. And he says, "Hey, I want to do some Scooby snacks because listen, my friend <laughs> Norwood, who's not Shaggy, but he's a different guy, you know now because he's not Shaggy, and he is." not doing drugs and he says so and it doesn't even have a mystery machine car to drive around or anything no yeah. he's just with me you know i'm just a dog i just talk in this voice but then when people don't even see we're smoking pot with <laughs> We're doing mushrooms together. I'm talking yeah. more. He's like, why is your name Norwood and you're not Shaggy or whatever, Nelville or whatever his name is, Niedermeyer and something like this. And you say, now, we're, I'm a dog. We're getting stoned. We're eating yeah. pizzas. We're like Brendan Fraser and the whale. We're pre-whale protocol. Uh -huh. We're just getting stoned and eating everything. That's a show I'd want to see. Or it could also be from the new season two is from Scooby's perspective. And he's basically talking shit on all of the characters. I don't like that as much. I think that could be funny, but yeah. all right. I guess that that won't happen. Thank you. Moving on. Hey, can I say something? Excuse me about uh, today. Yeah, you man. on the show. And, you Same. know, we're we're uh, we're the best of pals. Right, Chad? Yeah, dude. Dude's a handshake. But I think uh, today you are being a bit of a flip toid, if I may. <laughs> My dad this concludes proud the historic 43rd oh. episode of Dude Z. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 88, bringing your cumulative total to 4,629. Mm -hmm. You only have 5,000. 371 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. Whatever, D. That's pretty good. In preparation for our next episode, Will, you must finish the first season of Chainsaw Man. Oh. And Chad, you must watch The Rock vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin from WrestleMania 17. All right. Thank you for joining us this week. I will use the day dive collected to make next week even better. Until then, call me Dude Z. Yes! Oh, fuck! That's awesome! And I've I been agree. watching some more um, uh, uh, Chainsaw Man. Did you get to seven yet? Episode six. I am on episode six. 
So I'm oh, looking forward. jealous. I wish I could really? go back and, and watch episode seven again for the first time. That's cool. I'm stoked to see the rest yeah. of Chainsaw Man. I'm enjoying the shit out of it. And you, my friend, are going right into the belly of the Attitude Era. WrestleMania 17, I believe it was in Houston, Texas. The Rock, Stone Cold. And if you're watching along at home with this, and Chad, I definitely want you to, to, to do this. I've asked you before. You got to watch the, the fucking... Um, the uh the the you know the preamble the the little yeah. the video package before the thing the, if i'm not mistaken this is the one that's done to limp biscuits my way great and it was one of those standout it was one of those standout video packages not unlike the uh creed my sacrifice wwe my sacrifice um you can sing her I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm getting better. Uh, you're going to really enjoy the shit out of uh, Stone Cold versus The Rock. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, it's gonna be and now good. for the Patreon bonus segment. This week, Will and Chad must watch and react to a video submitted by Oliver Blue. It's called Window Frame Cipher Part 2 by Pete and Bass featuring the Snooker game. <laughs> Thank you, what? Oliver, for this submission. <laughs> Chad and Will, you can access this video in your Dude Z folder. Okay. You running the wheels of steel on this? Yep, I got it. Uh, this was a video that actually came to me on our Discord through Oliver Blue, as dudes, he said, you got to get on that Discord. All sorts of weird shit is being shared. And he goes, Will, I think you might like this. And I knew who else was going to like it, dudesy, because the big D was listening. And this is, this is fucking insane. <laughs> now it's the big D. All right. Are you ready for this? Yeah, let's go for Here it. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, Pete what and Bass. Hell? Look at all these things. The Snooker team featuring. If you like dudes, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like dudes, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like dudes, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then 